Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Pocket Paragons Season 2. In this, there's going to be Acquisitions Incorporated and Space Lion. Pocket Paragons is a two-player game that takes roughly about 5 to 30 minutes to play, and is for ages 13 and up. And in the game Pocket Paragons, you are going to select your style of play, whether it be a one-on-one -on -one duel or whether it be a three-versus-three -three duel, uh, where you'll be selecting your characters and then going uh, back and forth with each of them. You'll be taking cards into your hand, playing them face down, revealing them, and then checking to see what happens. It could be one card counters another, both cards inflict damage upon the other player, or it could be that your card, as you try to return cards from your hand that you've played throughout the round, uh, is going to be executed, thusly defeating your character altogether. If your character passes on in the dual mode that's a tournament style, you get to choose a new character and you can take one of the previous cards from your dead character and move it on, thusly customizing your deck, which is really, really unique about this game. This is basically a souped up, amped up version of rock, paper, scissors, but instead of just rock, paper, and scissors, now you've included a Gatling gun and a nuke or an explosion of some type. And these are all like different types of like variations that you can utilize in the game. But uh, sometimes your nuke can be countered by a cannon barrage or sometimes your uh, cannon barrage can be countered by a typhoon or a tornado. And each of the characters have their own unique styles. Speaking of styles, there's an ult that you can utilize as you gain energy throughout the game by countering your opponents or gathering your cards back, thusly gaining energy. You can use these cards to either put in your hand and eventually play or their passives that will last throughout the entire game. Will you become the ultimate winner in Pocket Paragon Season 2? Find out after I explain how to set up, how to play, and of course, my review. Setting up Pocket Paragons is actually quite simple. Depending on your variant of play, you're going to be getting something that's going to allow you to track two stats. It could be that you have one of these guys here or a mat. You're going to start with zero energy and you're gonna start with 10 HP and you can monitor it with maybe one of these guys here or your mat itself, depending on what you have. Uh, if you ever go to below zero HP, you're dead. So make sure you keep above that. And of course, with in most of the characters, you'll start with zero energy. Then after that, you'll choose any of the characters available. And you can choose uh, between any different set, first season, second season, uh, things like this Aegis uh, set of characters. And once you've selected your character, uh, then you're going to place it out. You'll take your character, put it out. You'll look for his ult ability and place it adjacent to the character. And the rest of the cards are going to go into your hand. And that's it. That's all you need to do for the setup of the entire game. However, there are other variants of play. If you're playing the tournament mode or the battle mode, you're basically able to select unique characters up to three. You will and your opponent will, and you'll secretly go back and forth selecting them. And then once you have them, you'll reveal your characters and then you'll secretly select one of them to utilize for the first round of play. And the setup for each of them is the same way as well. You basically select one of the characters, put out the character uh, card down, put out the ult card down, and put all the cards into your hand. Make sure you got your tracker for your HP and your energy, and your opponent does the same. And then, after that, the game begins. Playing Season 1 is the same as playing Season 2. It's very, very simple how Pocket Paragons works. You'll take the cards into your hand, other than the ult and the character card, and you'll choose one of those cards and place it face down next to your opponent. They will do the same. Then you will reveal the cards. You will check to see what type of card you played and what type of card your opponent played. Check on the bottom of each card to see if you counter that card. If you counter a card, the card that gets countered will return to the opponent's hand and you will gain an energy and you will do all the damage, all the effects of the card that you played. Your opponent will do nothing. <laughs> if you do not counter the card and they do not counter yours, uh, then you're going to keep both cards down and apply effects. Their effects will apply to you and your effects will apply to them. It'll go damage first, then it'll go health, and then afterwards you'll check to see what happens to the cards. Generally speaking, cards will go into a discard pile. You'll put your card in your discard pile and so will they. Uh, always remember though, if you ever counter an opponent's card to always gain one energy. Uh, there are, are, are different rules and variations to how this works, but for the most part, if you counter a card, you gain energy and your opponent will take that card and put it back into their hand. And otherwise, the cards will both just go into the discard pile after applying effects. Effects can range in a variety of different ways, but for the most part, you're going to be doing damage. The symbol on the card in the middle will have a number most likely, and that number is how much damage you deal. In this effects box here, this could apply additional bonus uh, effects, whether it be damage or getting cards into your hand or having unique uh, new effects from the uh, second season, and you'll apply those as well. Put the card in the discard pile and then once again choose a new card 
and put it face down onto the field. Each player will do so, and then you will reveal. Check to see the effects, the cards will go to the discard pile, and you will rinse and repeat. There are two unique things about this game. Uh, one of them is when you play cards like this one here called Grow, you are going to be able to ready all of the cards uh, in your discard pile. To ready cards, after they go to the discard pile, as well as grow, they're going to be returned to your hand. So basically you're going to be able to get the cards back that you played when you play this symbol here. But remember, if you play this symbol here, the grow symbol, your opponents can execute you. There is one card in each player's deck that is going to be the red uh, sword card. And if this card is played when the grow card is played or the uh, sacred card is played, then you will lose the game. So you have to be very careful about when you choose to gain your abilities back into your hand, knowing that your opponent can execute you at any moment. It doesn't matter how much HP you have, you will simply lose the game. If you're successful in playing the grow card and they do not execute you, you'll get your cards back and you will gain energy whenever you do so. Just follow all the effects on these cards cards here. And that's basically how the entire game goes. Uh, each player has the same symbols in their deck, doesn't matter what character you have. It could be a card like this that's going to let you recuperate cards. Could be this one here, it lets you execute other players' uh, grow cards. It could be something like this thorn wall, which is basically preventing damage from your opponent. Uh, this fist here, which also soft counters or can counter this card here, the uh, winged card. You have this book here that counters fists, and then you have the wings that counter books. So uh, there are, I believe, one, two, three, four total cards that can be countered in the game. And uh, that's basically how the game works. So you're basically gonna be playing cards, revealing them, checking to see what happens, and if at any point your opponent's HP goes, goes below zero and stays below zero at the end of the round, meaning after cards have been flipped and cards go to the discard pile, then the person whose HP is at zero loses and the player who isn't wins. And the only other way that this changes is if you're able to execute your opponent when they're attempting to get the, gain the cards back into their hand. And that's, that is completely pocket paragons in a nutshell. It's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. A face down card game, reveal, do damage, hit zero HP, or execute them before that happens. So this is basically an over-involved rock, paper, scissors. But is it all based on luck? The answer is no, not at all. This game is based on strategy. Making sure you choose cards that your opponents are not going to try to counter. Making sure you try and execute your opponent when they try and gather their cards back in their hand. And making sure that you use the character that you have on the field to its advantage against your opponent. Each character functions completely differently. Each card in your hand is going to have unique effects. Even cards as simple as this one here that let you return cards to your hand can have a unique benefit to you when you play it other than just gaining you an energy and of course gaining cards back from your uh, discard pile. In the Season 2, there are two new effects, too. You have the Level Up effect that lets you level up based on with your energy, and the other one, which is my personal favorite, which is the Seal. Some cards, when you play them, will get sealed, and instead of going to your discard pile and being returned whenever you play one of these cards here, basically, whenever you were to ready cards or return them to your hand, you instead turn them from a 90-degree angle back to its normal positioning, and then the second time you do that, the second time you play, like, a Grow card here, um, uh, you're going to be able to take this card and put it back into your hand. So it's kind of like Magic the Gathering's creature is tapped until the next turn, as opposed to just being able to... Re this, this card needs to be returned twice, as opposed to just returned once. Not only that, but all the characters have unique twists and turns to them as well. Uh, like, for instance, this one is really cool. This one is called Jared and Alex, uh, Bounded Friends. Basically, any of your non- sun abilities get plus one attack for each energy that you have up to a maximum of five and that's how much energy you can have total which is five but you cannot gain energy in this deck like you normally would instead at the end of every round whenever you play a card and reveal it you will just simply gain an energy after the that round has finished your opponent, however, has the opportunity to seal one of their cards meaning play one of their cards to the discard pile sideways and make you go to zero energy after that happens if they don't, however, you are going to be able to increase your energy and then continually gain stronger and stronger cards with plus one attack, plus two, plus three, plus four, to the point where if they don't and you have five energy, you can go ahead and play a card that's like this overrun for one damage and all of a sudden now it's worth six damage, which is more than half of your opponent's starting HP. So they have to be careful and choose how many cards they want to seal. 
also if they seal too many cards, just in general, in principle, they're going to be left with not having any cards left to choose. And thusly, they're going to be stuck with a lot of opportunity for you to try and execute their card. And just this one character has all that unique stylization to it, which is awesome. The fact that these ultimates in Season 2 have such a variety and uniqueness to them is, is great. Of, of course, each of the characters as well have this really cool symbol on the top left-hand side. It tells you what type of character they are and how challenging they are to play. So a one is a very, very simple character, a two is a more challenging character, and a three is a very complex character. But complex and easy does not make them better or worse. Uh, it just makes them more interesting and more hard to develop, uh, to, to understand, I should say. But if you can master them, you can be very, very powerful with them. This guy here has this really cool card called Persistence. It says whenever your enemy plays an ability, you may ready an exhausted ability of the same symbol. So uh, th basically this guy has a ton of cards that instead of just going to the discard pile like normal, they're going to usually go to the side like that. They're going to be sealed. But when you have your passive up, your ultimate passive up, whenever they play a card, your opponents uh, play a card that has the same symbol type, you'll get to turn it over, and then if they play it again, you can return it. So now there's additional ways to return cards that are very strong, faster to you. There are The main way in which ults are utilized is, is either passively or as an ult. If, there, if it's an ult and you hit the energy threshold, you'll get to put it into your hand and you can utilize it. If it is a passive, once you hit the passive, the card activates and you can utilize it. And whenever your enemy plays an ability or whatever, whatever it says, you will do that thing while that thing is activated. And so you're going to be utilizing these cards with your passive, which in, in, enhances your character as you go along. And you could choose to try and advance it faster by trying to play cards like the rest card, which is, you know, the sun card, the card that allows you to gain cards back to your hand to gain you more energy faster if you don't know if you can counter your opponents because there's some like, gambling that is going to take place in the game. I went through pretty much every single one of these characters. We played a few tournaments already, and I I just really, really am enthralled with the unique stylization of each of the different characters and how a game that's very, very simple to play, very easy to understand. This will take you five minutes to learn and understand the basics of the gameplay, but is very hard to master. And predicting your opponents can be quite challenging and sometimes come out to being a 50-50 run where you might actually win the game on just blind luck, which is possible, or you use extreme strategy and choose exactly what card you want to use when you want to utilize it and put your opponent on the, the, the tilting point or the tipping point to where they have to start playing cards they don't want to play to prevent them from utter death. And all of these cards have such unique twists and turns to it, like opening the red door with Proteus, the Vacus Royalty. This guy here, instead of just playing one card down, now you can play two. And the passive is infinite and doesn't require energy. And when you, cho you choose to play two of them, you can then go ahead and uh, seal uh, one of them if you don't want to. After your opponent plays their card down, you can go, okay, I'm going to go ahead and seal this one. And bam, I'm going to play this one here. But... Doing that, while it gives you an extreme advantage, is going to make you suffer as well, because now you've got two cards in this card pile, and one card is sealed. And to get them back, you have to rest. But when you rest, you have that opportunity to lose the game. And so there's a lot of high risk, high reward, high return in this game. Uh, all the artwork is unique, and uh, like there are, you can tell that there's like different artists for the different sets and series. The Aegis set, this is from Breeze's game, Aegis uh, combining robots uh, system, we just they did a second edition for this game, which was a lot of fun. And so uh, there's going to be uh, some from even, I believe, the Level 99 series, the Temporal Odyssey. So you can choose different characters from like different worlds, which is awesome as well. And you can combine them and put them into your team. So it kind of feels like you're playing uh, Capcom versus Marvel, you know? And it's, it's very, very straightforward and simple, but the unique twists and turns added to the game make it so much fun. And then you have the ability to kind of take cards from an opponent, from your, your, your losing deck. So you can say, okay, Mr. Oops lost. I can now go ahead and take uh, one of his cards that doesn't have a, a sealed symbol, which is gonna have this little like seal on the top right. And I can put it in to the new deck I'm playing. So now I'm gonna play with Jared here. I can go ahead and remove the same card of the same type and put in the new card. And now I have a new deck of cards to utilize. And if this guy perishes away as well, the next character I take out, I can now go ahead and bring in two cards from this old deck, including the card that I got from Mr. Oops, thusly customizing this deck even further. So you're gonna have tons of customization in this game. 
overall artwork and quality and style is great. Some of the character art I like a lot, and some of it, uh, I, 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 it's kind of weird, I guess. Like this, the, the tree here. I love the character itself, but he's like, you know, it's like two dudes stuck in a tree together forever, and they're bounded frenemies. So they don't like each other. Just kind of like this bizarre, unique, stylized artwork that I like, but also kind of creeped out by. Uh, there's just so much personality as well, and I feel like you're gonna find the artwork that you like, and because there's so many options to choose from in this game. And it is a ton of fun. The only sad thing about the game is it's a two-player game, so you'll be going back and forth playing with each other. And uh, I guess you can set up tournaments as well. So it all works out pretty well for this game. But yeah, if you're looking for a cool head-to-head -head game that you can play really, really quick or set up a tournament style, then Pocket Paragons is for you. Straightforward and simple strategy makes for an easy, light game that I can take anywhere that I'd like and bring out, pick a character, you pick a character, and then we play. Train, plane, automobile, it doesn't matter. You can have fun with Pocket Paragons. Season 2, available now on Kickstarter. Thank you guys for watching our Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Pocket Paragon Season 2. We did a review for Season 1 a long time ago, and that was a lot of fun. And this here is just more fun, more goodness with unique twists and turns. I love the fact that they keep uh, upgrading and enhancing the style of play without removing the complexity of the game. And that characters with their ults turn into completely new stylizations, uh, like new changes that come with this game, which is just excellent. You can go ahead and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube on uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification button if you see more than one of our videos here, uh, then maybe it's time that you do so. Hopefully we've earned your subscription. Every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST, we do a live stream on whatnot. And of course, at 6.30 p.m. PST, we do a live stream on Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube as well. All right, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to battling it out with you next time.